Welcome to another cool video about SAP Application Lifecycle Management and Build-in Support. This time the topic is SAP Solution Measure and the integrated flow from requirements to deploy. This video is part of our overall series of ALM and Build-in Support. We are in part 5, the SAP Solution Measure Roadmap, and we have arrived at the final video of this chapter with the integrated process flow. So let's take a look. Our promise in SAP Solution Manager is to be the best of suite and have an integrated process flow from requirements to deploy built into the product. So you see our functional capabilities on the left hand side. You see process management, release management, project management, requirements management, change control and the test suite. And there are two important elements that hold all of this together, that like bring it under one umbrella. One thing is called the scope. The scope defines what you are focusing on in the project from a content perspective. So what kind of systems are you working with? What kind of business processes are you working with? What kind of version of the business process is important to you? The second element that is important is the project. So uh, during which time are those changes made? Who is working on it? So all the project information. And this is something that we were sort of missing in the early days of SAP Solution Measure 7.1. You see here with the integrated process, there's like one item that holds everything together from top to bottom. So from top to bottom, that's the scope. So what it is that we care about. And going sideways, you have the project information. So the team that works on it and the time that is relevant for this specific change. Interested to learn more? Let's find out how this all works together. So initially, we have a solution in SAP Solution Manager. And the solution holds information about the technical landscape, the version of the process documentation, also sometimes referred to as the branches, and we have information about the business processes themselves. If we take a look then how we introduce a change, we have an entity that is called the change cycle. The change cycle inherits some information from the solution, such as the version of the solution documentation and also the landscape information, such as what is my development system, what is my quality assurance system, and where is my production, and how it is called. Then we have, finally, the project. The project also inherits some important information. It inherits the scope from the solution. So the scope is like a carve out of the existing solution with respect to the processes. And the project also knows information about the landscape. When we then go into the module of requirements and change, we inherit again information from the project that is a landscape that we know. And when we look at the test plan, the test plan also knows the project and the scope. In the end, when you report progress in testing, you want to know what project is this change related to, why am I testing this change, what does this test plan mean, and also what kind of focus topics have been changed as part of this project. All of this then comes together and is visualized through the so-called traceability matrix that helps you to understand where you are in the project. Interested to learn more? Let's go to a quick demo. Here we are in SAP Solution Measure. This is the UI that you use when you work in solution documentation. Remember I said um, in solution documentation we have a scope, so it's a subset of the processes that we have in solution documentation and we select only the ones that we really work with to also avoid, avoid confusion. So for this you would go ahead and instead of showing all processes, you would go ahead and you would select a certain scope. In our example, the scope is called P2P, so Procure to Pay for EMEA. And you see in Procure to Pay for EMEA, you only see the Procure to Pay process now. So it's sort of like a filtering from a content perspective. So with this scope, we can then go ahead and we can reuse all of this information. Let's take a look at the project now. The project, we have a Procure to Pay project for EMEA, 
And in this project, we also assign solution documentation. So the project knows what functional area we are touching. So in this case, we assigned the scope P2P EMEA to the project where we deal with the management of the project. Now let's take a look at the requirements. When we go ahead and we document an IT requirement, for example, so here we have the IT requirement, we enter a description, we enter sold to party, owners and so forth. And then we go ahead and we assign a project to the IT requirement. Of course, in this case, it will be our procure to pay project EMEA that we select. By selecting this project, you see at the top now that automatically the right change cycle is assigned and that also the landscape is assigned for the project. So all of this information comes into our IT requirement automatically. So no need to do any of this manually. In addition, you can also go ahead and assign the solution documentation to the project. So here let's go ahead and search for the right documentation. In this case, we want to change a purchase order. And then in the end, all we need to do is to assign the document type to manage all of this. Once this is done, we can go ahead and start preparing the test and executing the test. Preparing the test is done in test plan management. So let's go ahead and start test plan management. The name of the test plan is called again procure to pay for purchase order workflow in this case. And you see the test plan is assigned to the project P2P EMEA and it is also automatically getting the information about the scope, the branch and the quality assurance system where the test is then being executed. Coming back, going to the next steps, you see that in your requirements, the one that we had previously created, we have additional information now. Scroll down to the very bottom. So here we can now say, how is this requirement tested? And we would now add the test plan that we had created before and assign it to the IT requirement for end-to-end -end traceability. And we save and continue to the next step. Now in test suite, we can take a look at the analytics and we can pull up the traceability matrix. So now the development has been done, the test has been planned and executed. And now let's take a look at the results. This traceability matrix will bring up um, a table having all of the information that is critical for a test manager and actually for the project manager as well. It contains the information what project it is that we have worked in. It will name um, the changes, the change cycles, the process steps that have been changed. It also has information about the test plan that is used to for sign-off, uh, including the test case, information about the status of the test case, and also, if available, any transport that is related to this whole end-to-end -end process. You also see who is involved in this, and obviously this is not a good environment to manipulate and to create reports out of. Therefore, you can also go ahead and download this end-to-end -end report from the traceability matrix. So test status here, obviously the most important information for our test coordinator is included here as well. Don't forget, downloading into Excel into a spreadsheet is also readily available. So overall, this concludes the demo. So what I've shared with you today is how we have introduced two key entities. The scope going from top to bottom to clarify what functional areas are touched in a project and the project going sideways across to share what kind of timeline are we on, who is part of the project team and this is also used for reporting purposes to keep everything together. To always know where you are and what your progress is, we introduced the traceability matrix with extremely comprehensive information about everything that's going on in the project, including download 
possibilities for further analysis. And this concludes the chapter SAP Solution Measure Roadmap. We're ending here with the integrated process flow from requirements to deploy in SAP Solution Manager.